Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi, from the Book of Reality of Hajj, could you please explain the seven layers of negativity around the nucleus and seventh tawaf around the Kaaba? Seven layers of negativity? Do we have that in the book or I think we have the seven names. So I don't know if the names represent the negativity, seven negative names, no but it's seven realities that we're supposed to traverse and the electrons represent negativity and our negative nature and the nucleus represents the, the positive and the Divinely reality in which that Divinely positive charge is drawing us. As a result of that positive charge it makes everything of a, that is a lesser which is negative want to be attracted to it. So Allah put that uh, Divine attraction as the reality of all existence because everything other than the heavens is of a lesser reality so negative. So the lesser reality is attracted to the greater reality and hence the reality of the tawaf and the spinning and uh, circumvallation and uh, centrifugal force that it's spinning to reach to the positive energies. And at the same time Allah gave us on our one atom seven rings. And each name we have is one of those rings and one of those paradises in which we have to ascend from our lowest name which is our earthly name and ascend towards our seven realities, six more into the center. So alhamdulillah that our, our journey is to know ourself and who knows ourself will know the Lordship in which governs us to that reality. So tawaf and hajj and all of these are deep, deep realities and it's not just you know that uh, Muslims do the tawaf, it's all of creation Allah created with that reality. Muslim is one whom submits their will to Allah so then you can see the rank of that faith is such a high rank that they're entitled to the knowledge of submission. So all creation is submitting it's just they don't know it. So the rank and the honour of Islam is they entered it now into the… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Realities of knowledge <clears throat> that lend them to understand, oh so this is the religion of Allah the religion of the Creator and the highest form of knowledge for creation. So as a university Islam is the highest in reality towards the Divine principles and Divine realities for all of creation inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sidi, regarding uh, last week's talk uh, we had uh, quite a few questions asking about are we allowed taking the taweez in the bathroom? They were, people were confused. Yes, the taweez that's covered means that if any, any type of religious item <coughs> for protection it has to be covered so as to keep the sanctity and the respect and the adab of that. So as long as the, the religious relic is covered it's a protection for us. So that's why the taweez necklace is wrapped in leather. And the other taweez is if they're under the shirts and you have overgarments that are regular and you're washing 
no problem as long as it's under and covered. But to take open religious symbols into the washing facility is not allowed. So then the jackets that have taweezes and the, the bird, the humma on it, they have to be taken off and then entered in for washing. <coughs> Just like we leave the Qur'an outside, if you have a portable Qur'an or you have all this religious writing on your phone, don't take that to the wash either, keep them outside. Keep your turban outside, rings, tasbihs, all of them put them deep into the pockets or keep them outside as a respect for the light and the, the reality. But the ta'weez is a protection against all the negativity inside the, the facilities in which shaitan's house is there. So as a protection against shaitan the ta'weez with the leather was designed to accompany you into that environment to be protected and to keep your head always covered in the facility, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum, my shaykh. Wa alaykum as salaam. Uh, shaykh, we, read genuinely, we genuinely want to know what makes our shaykh happy. What makes our, our, us happy? Alhamdulillah that when, when people are following and feel a love for Prophet and as they begin to do good then there's a tremendous happiness. Because we know then Prophet is happy with us. So everyone is, is vying for the attention of the Divine and the attention of the Divine comes through the two eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's how this system is, is very precise that we want Prophet to be happy with us. So our life is how then to inspire people to achieve his nazar. So by feeding, by spreading knowledges, by having good character, by passing our tests at home, by generally being good ambassadors of what's being taught by the shaykh, Prophet becomes happy with the students and as a result we gain the nearness to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So then that, that then makes uh, our eternal joy. So to be, this is what we're searching for is something that's eternally joyful. So alhamdulillah if Prophet is not happy with the shaykh and not happy with his teachings and not happy with his students then it's a lost effort. That's an action that has no value but that's why we said faith in action because everybody may say, oh our action is, is loved and yours is worthless. But the proof is in the pudding, it's not in what people say because everybody has a mouth and everybody knows how to use their mouth. But the actual action is the proof. So when you see with that, okay these people whom listen to you three, four, five, thirty thousand, out of them three to five thousand active participants. From them four to five hundred extremely active participants established two thousand wells. All in the names of holy people and relatives, all flowing sadaqah, everything that Prophet described that pleases him, well then that has an immense, immense blessings. He must be very happy with the community that did that and then gave out hundreds of thousands of pounds of food that were destined for trash cans. And we gave them and distribute them by the people whom love and the people who support those love, the people who send money for the gas, for the vans, for the, the services, the people who actually jack it up and put on their clothes and go out and hit the road, all of those. So then that must gain a lot of credibility within the heavens. So it's the actions that count, all the videos are going out, all the productions going out. All the three times a week having nasheeds and not shutting down and always even through COVID sort of keep reciting, keep reciting to hundreds of thousands of viewers and hearing the nasheeds and hearing the teachings, they like it, they don't like it, we don't care, eventually they come that way, it's the only game in town. So that must make them very happy in the heavens inshaAllah. So the, the proof is in the pudding and faith in action, if other people can do it better power to them, let's see if they can do it. But if people just want to sit and make comments then you know we say a word of peace and continue what we're doing, inshaAllah.
السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاته سیدی و علیکم السلام و رحمت الله و برکات Sayyidi, how should one pray Tarawi alone when they don't have the entire Qur'an memorized? Thank you for everything. You're most welcome. We don't do that system anyways. Qur'an reading and combining it in 20 rak'ah is a innovation. It's not something that was required and innovation for Arab speaking community. So Qiyam al-Layl is meditation. So people whom don't understand meditation, Allah made a whole month dedicated to meditation. Qiyam al-Layl, these 20 rak'ahs is considered meditation and its purpose was to pray the 20 rak'ahs so that they're spending their night in a night vigil in which they're worshipping their Lord, Allah worship the entire night. Then when he saw it was heavy he said, okay well then half of the entire night. And then when that's too heavy, okay then half of the half, less than a few hours of the night. So it's a system of meditating and contemplating and connecting with our Lord. So the 20 rak'ah is a separate issue and there's immense barakah in reciting two Suratul Ikhlas in the first rak'ah, one Suratul Ikhlas in second rak'ah so that each of the sets of rak'ah which are comprised of the, the, the two rak'ahs is three Surat al-Ikhlas which is uh, the barakah of reciting entire Qur'an in three Surat al-Ikhlas. So it has immense, it's as if each set you're reciting entire Qur'an. So it wasn't necessary to have the Qur'an memorized for the 20 rak'ahs. Then meditation upon the Qur'an was to be done separately in which daily you recite and read your juz of Qur'an which is in the Naqshbandi awrad already every day. So you have 30 days to recite and read 30 sections reading and sitting and meditating. So for a non-Arab community the purpose of sitting there for two hours and somebody reciting long surahs which you don't understand is then completely defeated. So many people after about four or five days they run away because they can't take it. So that was meant and that's good for Arab speaking audience because for them it's meditation. They hear it, they understand it completely, it's probably a very beautiful experience. But if you don't understand Arabic it just becomes very long and tedious. So from Sultan and Awliya we never saw that. They prayed the 20 rak'ahs with Surat al-Ikhlas and the in-between etiquettes and recitations and the Qur'an was something separate. Throughout the day you can meditate and read your one juz of Qur'an and by the end of Ramadan you will have completed the Holy Qur'an. Meditating and understanding by reading in your language which is more important is to learn it, absorb its realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, what should be the preferable language while writing sohbats? Can we write uh, translation in our language? Yeah, write in the language that you think. <coughs> if you think in Urdu or think in Farsi or think in Arabic, write in the language in which you think because you want to be able to listen and begin to write. And as you become more established in writing, you find that you're writing and then you're expanding because for each person the knowledge is, is expands within their heart. So they hear it, they've heard it many times and then it begins to expand within the reality that, I oh something clicks and then they get it they start to write even more and then it clicks again and then it expands again. So many things you've heard repeated over 30 years. But each time should be something new because nothing in Allah's way is becomes old. It's new because you should be at a new horizon at every moment. What you know this year is not comparable to what you knew last year. If you're doing things right and ascending, if you're going down that's something different. But as we grow in our spirituality then each year we begin to know more, we comprehend more of the reality. And each talk then lends itself to a deeper understanding individually amongst people because everyone's at their own unique space, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi 
Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. Sadi, how can we go on as usual with less sleep this Ramadan? Or how can we deal with less sleep this Ramadan? Can it be substituted by meditation? Yeah, I don't know if you need less sleep this Ramadan. I think it's less food. So it's the, the concept of Ramadan is about the food, try to eat less and do more worshipness and the sleep is going to be as your cycle of sleeping, trying to adjust your cycle of sleeping. If you have to get up early for work then try to nap when you come home so that it's you know depending upon your ability and your physical abilities. If you don't have work then you try to you know rest and uh, get up and do your recitations and whatever practices you have. But it's about also trying to eat less so that you feel the lightness for your worshipness. So when you break fast, you break fast, light breaking and then pray your taraweeh. With the Salat al-Taraweeh, Qiyam al-Layl then it's more meditative and you can meditate, close off a room somewhere, doing it by yourself is powerful. Doesn't need to be in jama' because our, our way is more powerful by ourselves. So we were not in need of being in, in big groups of people but when you have a jama' alhamdulillah then the power is in the jama' but when we're by ourselves somewhere far away from people it's an opportunity that Allah gives to us is then to isolate and be alone with your Lord in your meditation. You break lightly your fast, you find that it wasn't really for hunger, not that many people use so much energy that they're starving at the iftar time. So if you feel that then you eat lightly and then you begin your taraweeh and prayers and after you finish all of those prayers then you can have a nice uh, meal and, and then prepare your suhoor and, and get ready to fast again and pray your fajr. So all of that should be very meditative and very sort of easy schedule, not to, to burn oneself out and not to make things too difficult and you try to reverse schedules. We have many new people that you know have their own flexibility of work. Highly advisable is flip your schedule, your day and night. If you don't have to be aggressively up at seven in the morning working, working hard, you have your own business, shift it to the afternoon and work into the night because now you can break your fast and continue to do some of your work in the evening. So make it and accommodate your schedule to what's happening around. So some people don't have to be up early but they say, oh that's my system, well you can then rest a little bit longer so the day isn't so long for you if you're older and have medication. And then you can start doing your work into the evening, after you break your fast you're, you're clear to think and do a lot of your work at night. So again there's no rules in which you have to do it a specific way, Allah is great and merciful. So you try to do it to the way that you can accommodate and complete the Ramadan as well as keep yourself to be healthy and, and energized inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Just to confirm for our daily juz, reading in Arabic the juz a day not necessary in Arabic but preferred to read in the language that one thinks? Yes, yes Allah is not in need of the recitation for the purpose of being a reciter. <clears throat> this is a time, it's a meditation time for us to meditate upon the Qur'an, tafakkur and contemplate upon the Holy Qur'an. That's how its secrets open. So when you recite in language that's not yours and you're not understanding what you're reciting then what was accomplished? So you can play the Qur'an in Arabic you're meditating and read in English and they don't have to correlate. You can have a YouTube that plays a juz a day, beautiful played in the home. You know you're, you're free to customize that there's no this way is correct or incorrect and if they say that then that's probably from those very extremist ideology because they, they like to make shaitan happy. And shaitan likes people to stop their worshipness. Allah likes people to be happy so that they continue and flourish in their worshipness. 
reading Qur'an and meditating throughout the day and reading in English and understanding what's being read. You read the English, read the transliteration so that you get to understand really what's being translated. And you go deeper and in, deeper into the knowledge, you can play YouTubes of the juz of Qur'an so there's a beautiful sound and recitation of Arabic. And then your, your nighttime prayers, they're just praying with Surat al ikhlas it's very light, it's very easy. And it's uh, 20 rakahs of meditation that doesn't take more than 35 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. If you're doing jama'at it takes longer because they're reciting out loud. When you recite by yourself it takes 35 to 40 minutes for 20 rakahs, inshaAllah. So the worshipness by itself is not hard, people make things hard, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Allah. Uh, what is the wisdom behind the videos often depicting a lot of scary imagery and thumbnails? The, uh, the wisdom is that the, the thumbnail artist loves those kind of <laughs> artwork because he's trying to get clickbait, the people to click on it. So if, if he put a title that was the real title that Jake talking about the immensity of love, nobody clicks on it. But if in two seconds of that video I talked about an alien encounter, you can bet that the title is going to be aliens are coming to eat you and a very nice scary <laughs> image on the cover. And so that people will click. Now once they click then they can listen to the sobats and they're all based on love and, and the love of Prophet so whatever we can do to get people to stop into this oasis of realities. That's why you know an oasis was under that understanding that from a distance you see it as something like a mirage, oh, oh this is something I want. And the, their artistry for the videos has to have that sort of element. Everybody's looking for something that they want, they want to know something supernatural, they want to know fantasy things, they want to know jinn things, they want to know energy things. So that's enough to bring them, sort of magnetize them to that reality which they, it'll be in the talk but the just of it is then to come to understand the love of Prophet inshaAllah. It's the key to all those realities anyways but it's just going about it in a way to make it uh, attractive and appealing for people, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam wa rahmatullah See, What is the effect of radio wave pollution around the globe on spiritual power of humans? I used to work at an indoor place free of radio waves, I always felt more connected there. Yeah, I think anytime you, you, you're free of certain energy currents and elements there's going to be tranquility because all the other frequencies and energies they're going to cause a, a difficulty upon human energy. So no doubt that's why people go high into the mountains or far away places or under oceans and wherever people go that are, are free from these currents and being cut off from them no doubt people are going to feel more connected to the Divine. But to, to live in that environment is going to be difficult, uh, more difficult even to earn a living in that type of environment. So Naqshbandiya then it's based on khawad al-anjuman means to be secluded but yet amongst the people because there's, there's more benefit in abstaining from candy if you live in a candy shop. Means that all of that around you and you still abstain, Allah gives you more reward than completely moving away from that environment, hiding within the mountains and the hills or the oceans which you can't sustain yourself, your family and your life. But no doubt that once you put yourself into these elements there's a lot of energy and people can connect with those energies. The same with when in your home you build a in a meditation area in which you don't have those devices, you don't have anything there but you know you sit and put your, your prayer items, you put the things that are related to your worshipness, your prayers 
and free from those types of energies and you should feel a very strong energy in that environment, inshaAllah. Good inshaAllah, illa sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa alihi sahbihi kiram wa lil mashaykh illa fi tariqata nashbandiyyat al aliyya khasatan ruhi man tariqa qawta khaliqa shah nashba Muhammad bin Isa al Bukhari, Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdullah Faiz al Daghestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Aad al Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Aad, Mawlana Khaliqa al Khujatawani, Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah Sayyidina alayhi salam. Thumma Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, Musaydatina Fatima al alayhi salam, Musayir wa Sadatina, Siddiqeen al-Fatiha. Shabbat Ya Rasul Kareem, inshaAllah we'll do Umm Dua and then we'll close off for tonight and then the gentlemen will do their tarawih and people can pray their tarawih tonight at home. And then tomorrow we, we have our uh, time, what time is the iftar on, on, on your side? 7.30, 7.30, 7.30, 7.30, yeah. yeah same, same, same time here. So then we'll start by 8 so that we can break and then we'll go live inshaAllah, inshaAllah. So by 8 o'clock tomorrow night we will be starting our, our Ramadan program inshaAllah. We can do uh, Ummah Dua for tonight inshaAllah and then we'll close off inshaAllah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Allahumma ajal awwala la majlisana hadha salahan wa awsatahu falahan wa akhirahu najaha Allahumma ajal awwalahu rahmatan wa awsatahu ni'matan wa akhirahu taqreematan wa maghfira Alhamdulillah alladhi tawada'a kulli shayin li adhamatihi wa dhalla kulli shayin li izzatihi wa khada'a kulli shayin li mulkihi wa astaslama kulli shayin li qudratihi wa alhamdulillah alladhi sakana kulli shayin li haybatihi wa azhara kulli shayin bi hikmatihi wa tasagara kulli shayin li kibriyaihi Allahumma ikithna fi habbis sa'ati laika ya wadudu ya dhul arshil majid fa'alun lima yurid hal ataka hadithul junood fir'awna wa thamood bal illadhina kafaru fi takzeeb wallahu min wara'ihim muhid bal huwa qur'anun mujid fi lawhin mahfuz اللهم اغفر لي ذنوبي ولوالدي كما ربياني صغيرا ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات على حياء منهم والأموات واغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقون بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم بجاه حبيبك المصطفى ورسولك المرتضى وبجاه أوليائك الكرام وبجاه صحابته الفخام وبجاه سلطان الأولياء سيد مولانا الشيخ عبد الله فائز داغستاني وسيد مولانا الشيخ محمد نازم عادل حقاني ومولانا الشيخ محمد عادل أن لا تدع في مجلسنا هذا زنبا إلا غفرته ولا دينا إلا قذيته ولا مريدا إلا شفيته ولا حاجة من حبائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قذيتها ويسرتها اللهم يسر أمورنا وقد ديوننا وفرج همومنا وفرج قروبنا وثبت قدامنا وانصرنا على أنفسنا وعلى القوم الكافرين اللهم اشفنا واشف مردانا ومرد المسلمين وعافنا وعاف مردانا ومرد المسلمين وتقبل منا يا ربنا يا الله وعمدنا بعمرنا لإدراك صاحب الزمان 
سیدنا مہدی علیہ السلام و سیدنا عیسیٰ علیہ السلام و ارزقنا شفاعت النبی المصطفی علیہ افضل الصلاة والسلام و اجعلنا ان نراہ فی الدنیا و فی الآخرة و اسکنا من حوضہ شربتا حنیتا مریتا لا نزمع بعدها ابدا اللہم انہا نسألک من خیر ما سألک منہ سیدنا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و نستعیذک من شر ما استعاذک منہ سیدنا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم الحمدللہ رب العالمین ربنا تقبل منا برحرمت من انزلت علیہ بسم سورة الفاتحة السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ This is Sheikh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.